Hello, what nuts, Humpty Dump nuts, and how many more? One nuts. It is Saturday, June 22nd in the United States and June 22nd in Canada, Edmonton specifically. And this is an unscheduled, unprecedented, unprompted, unbelievable episode of What Chaos. My name is David DJ Bean. This is Peter Pete Blackburn. That is Sean DePaz. And boys, your Western Conference champs just might be your Stanley Cup champs. Who knows? We've learned that it's either going to be the Western champs or the Eastern champs. It was proven Friday night. The Stanley Cup will now be won by either the Edmonton Oilers or the Florida Panthers. And man, seven games. Unbelievable. Best season of hockey maybe ever. Craziest Stanley Cup final, maybe ever. God bless America and Canada, specifically Edmonton. That was some good numbers crunching by you to uh, dig that up. It was to deduction. start the show. It was, uh, it was. I did a quick process of elimination. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we have been asking the question for days now. Hey, it's going to be the last game of the season. Going to be the last game of the season. Going to be the last game of the season. And it always is like a little unsettling, not knowing. Now we fucking know. We know Monday night in Florida will be the last game of the inaugural What Chaos season. And it is the most perfect finale that we could ever dream up. It is the Edmonton Oilers in possibly the most chaotic game set up in NHL history. This is fucking crazy. Edmonton Oilers potentially erasing a 3 nothing series deficit to win the Stanley Cup in Florida with us in the building. With us in the building is a great part of it. And we, we can maybe do this during uh, parade time if it does happen. But that this team made the freaking playoffs <laughs> after how their season started. That this team is a win away from the Stanley Cup after how the cup final started is just unbelievable. And yeah, they came back in the second round in Vancouver uh, only led them in that series, but nobody freaking thought that Edmonton was going to lose that. Like this, there have been so many points this season where it was like, they're so good. They should be so good, but it's just not happening for them. They can't get out of their own way for that to be the team that goes to game seven of the Stanley Cup final. And we're going to give Florida credit too because nothing's won right now. Uh, but I am just so excited that the Oilers have forced a game seven. As Pete said, we are going to Florida. Sean, you excited? I'm excited to go to game seven. That's right. Yeah. Sean doesn't want to travel. I don't want to travel at either. all. I don't oh, at all. So like Sean, you're like mad. I'm not mad. I just don't. I would be way more excited if the series was in New York or something. But yeah, I hear you. We'll I'll make a couple I hate of calls. Traveling so much. I'll I, see what they can do. It's weird. The older I've gotten, the more I hate flying. Like I don't I think would, that's weird. I would think as a kid, especially as a kid who hate. I mean, I still hate heights. But like as a kid, I, flying never bothered me, and now I fucking hate it. Kids are stupid. I, I probably. Yeah, but the, you would think like getting in a giant tube. Go like I don't remember ever experiencing turb turbulence as a kid. Kids that's love a good take. roller coasters. I don't know if I remember that either. I hated well. That's the thing. I was a scaredy cat okay. as a kid. When I, I was hated when I, I was like it. a little kid, I would go on rides, nothing crazy. And then once I turned like eight, once I turned like nine, ten, eleven, twelve, way more scared of doing. And stuff. it's interestingly come with a greater awareness that air travel is safe. Like I would have thought as a kid, 
Uh, I'm flying in Boeing down to Florida, so well, this safer, could be my last episode. Safer than the rest? We haven't ever discussed what would happen in that situation. Uh, but <laughs> what if one of us died? <laughs> if, uh, yeah. It'd be tough. Show goes on, I guess. But uh, Just don't let me die before Game 7. Let me see Game a, 7, please. It's a really a good Boeing. start to this conversation. <laughs> just be like, hey. Uh, I mean, this is really the, the Barbie scene where they're all dancing to the Dua Lipa song that is just a worse version of Don't Start Now. And she's like, you ever think about dying? And the music stops. <laughs> Do you ever think about it? No, but That I tells am- me, you're, 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 Sean, you're fucking pulling for the Panthers. You wouldn't be talking about death as much. I don't think I am. I was pulling. You can't be now. I'm you not, can't at be this now. Point, yeah, that's not, true. The fact that the Game 7 is happening, like I have... I, I did my I did my uh, CBS hit after Game Six, and CBS is fa- famously headquartered in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Okay, and so a lot it's of for the lightning play for those who don't know. Yes, and a lot of the uh, a lot of the people that work down there have since become like adopted uh, Panthers fans. And the guy that was anchoring the segment, uh, the one Hakeem Dermish, he he rocks. Was like, I'm a, I'll be honest with you, I'm a I'm a Panthers guy. I, I've been rooting for the Panthers this whole time, and I gotta be straightforward with you. I kind of hope the Oilers win this series just because it is a it's an incredible story. Yeah, like don't you like history? And also, if you're not subscribed to the YouTube, uh, sometimes we look at the camera after we say things. We do little nods and winks. The Panthers uh, are the team that plays in Fort Lauderdale, not the Lightning. <laughs> I mean, technically, no one plays in Fort Lauderdale. That's they play Sunrise, in Sunrise. Florida. That's right. Sean, you excited to go to Sunrise? Can you just go to you can say no to that question. Uh, I mean, you cool. are excited talk to, to go to Game like, 7. That's talk, the one thing that you're saying that you're yes. excited for, and that's in Sunrise. So. Talk to me in like 40 years. Maybe I'll be excited to go to Sunrise. Sean, you're <laughs> going to be chilling poolside. Will I? In it's gonna Sunrise. Be, it's going to be raining. It is going to be raining. For Sean, part of it. look that up and give us a, like, a little You're chilling grumble. indoor poolside. <laughs> indoor poolside. Am I? You play your cards, right? I could. It, there's a service that's like Uber for pools. I'll just look up places that have indoor pools. I'll get you to an indoor pool. Then we're going to have to hire a freelance like video guy to shoot stuff. But whatever makes you happy, man. True story, though. This is the second time that we'll be going to Vegas this season mm-hmm. from a place that is not Boston. True. Wow. That's history. History being made in the NHL this season. And that's what it is that we've gone to uh, from to- Toronto to Vegas and then Florida to Vegas. Yeah, we got a big week ahead of ourselves. But I was saying before we jumped on here, like... Look, boys, we are going to be cooking down mm-hmm. in Florida. There is so much going on leading up to Game 7. Empty the tank. Well, yeah. I mean, there's going to be – there's some Florida-related content that we've wanted to make this season anyway. So it's like, fuck it. Let's just do that as well. We're going to go down. We're going to do some Oilers stuff. Of course, we do have credentials. Shouts out NHL. Uh, I'm going to try to get to – Pete, you're coming in Sunday. Sean, you want to hit a veil on Sunday morning? You can sit sure. in on Johnny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You could see he's gonna be. Like, oh, I mean, how if I'm funny would it be if to... Sean was just di- like dying laughing at any everything that Paul Murray said before uh, at uh, availability on Sunday? I mean, I'm just, not he a... just says something very straightforward. Sean's in the back. <laughs> <laughs> just, that would rock. <laughs> I just don't understand. The problem is, is that unlike you, bo- and I mean both of you, I fucking love Paul Maurice. I'm not no, I know. I, I love. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I just I said I on Friday's <laughs> episode that if the Panthers lose the Stanley Cup final, I will be pretty gutted for Paul. Maurice. I know. I was just giving you a hard time. He uh, he's coached against me a lot, famously, yes, but you are I yours. like him a lot. I mean, he's you gotta come out there. My wife was afraid of the dark. <laughs> she saw me naked. Now she's afraid of the light. I googled. Uh, Rodney Dangerfield quotes. Oh my what God. if that just became his stuff? No respect, I tell you. Just really taking the heat you off bl- his team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Sean's like, this is good strategy. <laughs> he's doing it for the boys. What Always. if he, like, what if, because he's, like, done all the jokes I thought I think he could do. He's done so many jokes. He just comes out starts doing the, tell you, gets no respect. He hasn't joked in a while. Uh, you no, blow he, one he, he three nothing C- series he made lead. made a CIA joke uh, after game six. He said he's going to get the CIA on the case to uh, review the offside call that pulled Barkov's goal off was the board. That like, was that comedy, Paul Maurice? Because like, I didn't actually see the clip, or was it like... Uh, I didn't. I, I think only it's just saw like the writing. way he talks. Well, because the other day he kind of made... A, I forget what it was. He kind of made a joke, but it was clearly like... Oh, the Oprah Winfrey thing. This is the Oprah. Like he, it was a joke, but he was clearly not happy. It was a quip. It was, yeah. Quick, quick, quick way to play. Uh, off of game six, 
Was there anything that like truly, truly surprised you or shocked you in game six? That the God, the Panthers want this didn't show up until the third period again. Yeah. And they it showed up a little more probably in the, the second period of game five. I'm not in all seriousness losing a ton of respect for the Panthers, but also as we've discussed, Maybe I didn't have as much respect for the Panthers as everybody else did going into this series anyway. I'm not like, what are these losers doing? I, I was pretty shocked, though, that the first period was as quiet from the, the Panthers. Although, I'll say this in the defense of the Panthers. So, like, the Stars have the same problem. This might just be a Chris Knobloch gets his guys to get in front of shots, to have good sticks get in lanes and just be overall dogs because this is two teams in a row now that we all thought would take it to the Oilers defense a bit more than they have mm -hmm. and they just haven't so at some point I'll also give uh, Chris Knobloch and the uh, those wonderful boys in blue a little more credit yeah I think this was the first time all series that I was truly disappointed in the Panthers in their effort and uh, you know, you can you can flush game four down the toilet just based off of, you know, it seems like every team chunks their first opportunity to clinch and it gets into their heads a little bit uh, here. We all kind of expected Edmonton to have juice in the building and, and that fire behind them and all that. We talk about that, maybe putting pressure in Edmonton's corner, but like Florida did nothing to counter that in to start this game. They they went into the first intermission down one nothing, and we thought that that was a moral victory oh, yeah. for the Panthers based off of how poorly they played and how flat they were coming out of the gate. They had two shots on net in the first period. They didn't get a shot on net from a forward f beyond 32 minutes into the game. Do you know so how many? They had nothing coming out of the gate in this game. Do you know how many forwards had multiple shots on goal for the Panthers in tonight? this game? Yeah, one, two, two. Barkov and Barkov had a good game. Yeah, no, Barkov was good in this game, and uh, it was Barkov had three, and Lundell had two. What I will say for Barkov though is Mr. Con Smythe, which I was Sayonara. I was never a Bob for Con Smythe guy. I was never. I was strongly a Barkov for Con Smythe guy. Barkov is a dash two. This postseason, it's over. It's that over, it, brother. May, Connor McDavid is a hell of a drug. And if you look at the points in this series, it is like the, the points leaders list in this series through six games. Pete is bloody insane. Connor McDavid, eleven points through six games. That makes all the sense in the world. Evan Rodriguez, you're like, yeah. What was it? Game two, he went off. Makes sense, I guess. Warren Fogle, Barkov, Bouchard, Hyman, Sam Bennett. Who, I mean, four points, but like. Has Sam Since Bennett been when? <laughs> particularly loud to you? No. Lundell, Ryan McLeod, Dylan Holloway. Crazy. Where the hell are the Panthers? Not where are the Panthers? Where is Leon Dreisaitl? I thought the Dreisaitl well, I mean, was better in the first period of game six. We, I think, are we universally given Dreisaitl the, we're assuming he's... He's off the hook. Yeah. I, he, I, he's off the hook. I don't think that you can expect much from him based off of how quiet he's been just because it's so uncharacteristic. But if you saw that list well, at, at any point, you would out of context, you'd be like, what the fuck is you this? Would, and, and someone said, guess how many games have been played. Guess where the, what the score of the series is. And you'd be like, McDavid leading with 11 points doesn't narrow it down at all because it, he could do that in two games or something. Like, I don't basically know, did. but you do see like, you see like Lundell and you see Holloway and you see Fogle and all these guys, you'd probably be like, I don't know. Like, has there just been two games played and no wild? Where's Matthew Kachuk? Where the hell is Sam Reinhardt? Where's Sam Reinhardt? Where is Carter Verhage? Uh, and there have been moments. There was a moment in, I forget what period of game six where the uh, the the Oilers turned it over in their defensive zone, and like my brain just saw Carter Verhage on the ice, and I was like getting ready to go like eat, buy donuts or something. So I was like, "This, well, this is gonna fucking end up in the back of the net," and it just didn't. The magic with that whole thing right now is not there, and the Panthers are kind of getting the shit kicked out of them, not physically necessarily, but. 
games one through three, the Panthers outscored the Oilers seven to four. And after game four, when I was doing the uh, post game stuff with the Oilers Nation guys, I was like, can someone pull up whatever the um, the uh, shit, the aggregate score is in this series? And they were like, it's 12 to 12. And I was like, oh, cool. It's, it's three to one in the series, but it's 12 to 12. Since game four, so games four, five, and six, and again, one through three, Panthers outscore the Oilers 7-4. Games four, five, and six, the Oilers have outscored the Panthers 18 to 5. It is murder on the ice floor, my friends. That's what's crazy to me. Like the Oilers have come storming back in this series. I thought there was gonna, I guess the, the hold on to your hats game was was game five, but by and large. The Oilers have sm- I ate one kind of throw like skews things a little bit, but like the Oilers have smoked the Panthers since we'll say the third period of PD's game three. Yes and no, because game game five, they they lost the, the the last 30 minutes of that game and they survived. But I mean, they won the first 30. So like they have been obviously the better team since that game four. And I mean 18 to 5 is crazy. Even if you throw, even if you pull the 8 to 1 scoreline from game four, they're still doubling Florida. It's like, 10 to 4. Yeah. It, I think. Who yeah. Knows? Yeah. Like that's, it's, it, this series has flipped on its head. And I'm just, I'm just really impressed by Edmonton's kind of done it in every way. They've kicked the shit out of them. Uh, they've kind of split a game mm-hmm. and they won a defensive battle here in like, they locked it down in game six. And I thought that Stu was really good again in game six. Like he is in the zone. Even I, I said famous last words, of course, knock on all the wood in the world as an Oilers fan. But like I, I was saying on one of the recent episodes, like, yeah, there's still going to be those moments where it's like, oh, Stu, what you doing? Or like, oh, Stu didn't see that one. Like I didn't get... Did, did we get one of those tonight? No. Like, it, Stu is in the zone, and especially even when he's going 10 minutes without seeing uh, a shot on goal, which is just becoming a regularity going back to, what, game five of the Western Conference Final. He is, like, really locked in. I bet the next time we talk to Petey, he's going to be like, yo, I'm Stu, keeping that Stu for real, <laughs> damn. Yeah, for those who uh, didn't see the big reveal on the uh, watch party, I, I purchased a white Stu Skinner jersey. It was not easy to get because there's Petey holding it up right there. Thanks to my dear friend, Pat, who got the jersey. Thanks to uh, Petey, who jumped on a group text with Pat. And I said, Steve, meet Pat. Pat, meet Steve. Pat is nice enough to grab the jersey. Steve is going to pick it up, blah, blah. They're talking with each other. And then at the they're being great. And at the end of the conversation, I said, Last thing I ask, uh, Pat, could you send me a picture of Petey holding up the jersey? And I had said Steve the whole time. And Pat was like, Petey, the, I forget what he was like, the expert. I was like, oh yeah, buddy, you're going to meet the expert. So <laughs> wins all around. I was worried, like, was getting the white stew jersey. Like there, there's some finality came with that. Sean was afraid to get a certain meal that we like to eat. Here, he was going to get it for the watch party, and he was like, I don't want to feel like it's going to be the end of something. He's famously uh, afraid to jinx things with what he wears or what he eats. I was worried that getting the white Stu Skinner jersey was a little cocky, but we should know by now. Stu, once he is unflappable, is unflappable. Yeah. I, when, I, but when he's flappable, he, the, splash the, around, brother. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just please, one more game, Don't be, don't be the flappable one. Just one more. Like, I, I need him to continue this through the end of the season. Monday, we should discuss best and worst like Case game scenario. sevens that we could get. Okay, okay. And, I mean, top of the list would be... Asshole Stu Skinner sucks. game. Yeah, I because agree with he, that. Because, like, it's just fucking factual now. It would break like, my heart. He doesn't suck. Mm-hmm. He's awesome. We were right all along. He's a, he's still a kid. He's 25 years old, which really, it's, as a goalie, 
which is like being 13. It feels good when you fight for somebody who nobody believes in, and then you end up being right. You know who's a big stew guy? My guy Pat, who got that jersey. So he he already has a a, a stew jersey. It's good, um, amazing. But uh, we, go I was gonna say, Stu has allowed one goal in two of the last three games, and is now making plays because he saw. I don't know if he's like this slow motion of that sprawling save he made, where like the puck kind of went under him for a second. And he looked back, and it, the slow motion replay looked like he was seeing it in like extra super slow motion. Like he was just so calm with he knew it was how happening. yeah, like he, with how he found it, dished it off, and Darnell Nurse empty net goal, his second of the Stanley Cup final, and now Stuart Skinner has been. The Oilers' best player in multiple games this series, and it, I haven't, I don't know what the stats are, but like has to have way better numbers than Bob through the series right now. Also, like, got to feel pretty good for the Oilers that they, they, they got this win without Connor McDavid and having like a massive impact because now you can say, like, all right, it's not just Connor dragging this team to a game seven, they won without a like a real big Connor McDavid game, and that's uh, that's a good sign, and also. We were talking about how Florida was the more opportunistic team mm-hmm. through the first three games, and just Edmonton was not executing on their opportunities that they were getting. Since that game three, the Hyman goal on the breakaway has made it four for four for Edmonton on their last four breakaways in this series. And previously, they were 0 for 4 in the first three games. So they have become the more opportunistic team. I wouldn't say that in game six that they were like lighting up or shelling the Panthers. But what they did do was they executed on on their opportunities. And they took advantage of basically everything that was given to them. That Hyman breakaway goal was filthy. That was some... You tell me I stand in front of the net. Do you know how that goal Uh, happened? Uh... Like how that breakaway happened? Tell me. It was Gus Forsling. It's all, yeah. Gus Forsling taking a turnaround shot from the point rather than getting the puck deep uh, uh, around the boards, firing it off a leg, a shin pad of an Oilers player. I forget who it was. And sending the puck down the ice and Zach Hyman turning on the Jets, Mm. converting on a breakaway. So that's like a, it's not been a great series for Gus Forsling either. Yeah, it hasn't. But also, I'm like, I'm not going to begrudge Gus Forsling for trying to make some fucking desperation plays when they are just unable to get anything of substance on Stu Skinner. Because even when, like, the few good chances that they had, he's just fucking seeing everything right now. Uh, Stu Skinner, 909 save percentage this series. Sergey Bobrovsky, 889 this series. Stu Skinner, 20 points better than him. And ding, 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 guess whose postseason save percentage currently starts with a nine? Stu Skinner. Stu Skinner. For him to overcome those bad couple of days. Is it like 787 or some shit in the Vancouver series? Uh, I'll have to look, but he, I mean, I could look up his... uh, Right. Uh, Game log. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's not important. I'll look it up while you're uh doing No, it. I mean I I have it uh I have it right I, now. I'm pretty sure that it, his his save percentage started with a seven after some of those tough games that he had uh in the Vancouver series. I mean uh game one, seven ninety two, game two, eight forty two, game three, seven thirty three, ride the pine. <laughs> and I mean, yeah, he was not good uh, the first three games of that series. But, yeah, then he came back game okay, after, six. Um, after the game three of Vancouver, his collective playoff save percentage was 877. Gross. Yeah. That is a uh, Sergei Bobrovsky Cup Final-esque 877. Uh, by the way, the Sergei Bobrovsky Cup Final road, he ain't beating the allegations. No, he wasn't terrible tonight, but like they got to him again. And yeah. now it's happened enough that But they're also they were leaving him they're leaving him out yes. dry. Like but, the, the the rush opportunities are just have not slowed down for Edmonton really since uh since game four. And it's I just I just can't it's hard for me to wrap my head around how things have changed so drastically since 
particularly game two when they gave up nothing. Yeah, has your has your opinion changed strongly about either of these teams? I know, like, Sean, you were saying maybe on the live stream that you're like, I just can't see how a team can come back from 3-0 and not win the seventh game. I disagree with that, but... I definitely disagree with that, but... Well, I, no, I, what I'm saying, I just I just don't understand how, like, emotionally you can get to a place where you could win a game after losing these. Like, I understand it's hockey. Teams win. I still think the Panthers could easily win game seven. I just can't imagine how you get there mentally. Uh, oh, yeah. I, like, I wouldn't be able to do that. Like, if I were the Panthers right now, I would be... Um, it's over for me. My I would be just such a shell of myself. Even if... And I, and I guess I thought that tonight would be... Or I'm sorry, this is a Saturday episode. And it actually is Saturday as we record this. I thought that like the real quote unquote last gasp, big push to kind of finish them off was going to be game five. And it was for half a game. And I was like, shit, man, we are all just assuming that it goes back to Edmonton and Edmonton wins, gas up the fucking bird, drag them back to Alberta. Florida is going to be gonna come out being like fuck it we got we got nothing to lose now that's why i was so disappointed by the way they came out because if you got an early goal in game six with how pumped that edmonton crowd was and you take the air out of that building with an early goal like florida would have had that moment of being like all right we're good yes we're good this is this is all right we know who we are and it they got nothing to come out of the gate and so like i would say that my opinion of them hasn't changed in a in a real big picture way but i'm i'm disappointed by by the lack of desperation and the lack of urgency and the lack of uh, of execution that they came out with in game 6 and i will say game 6 was the first time that from an arm's length i i looked at them and i was like oh shit they're wearing this frustration they're wearing this worry they're wearing how this series is taking a toll on them. You saw Paul Maurice absolutely losing his shit behind the bench when they overturned that Barkov goal in the second period, which we said and agreed in the moment, me and Sean, we were like, that goal, that goal being taken off the board feels more like a goal being scored against the Panthers than just a, a run-of-the-mill goal being overturned because that was such a swing swing oh, decision could have gone either way with the review like razor razor thin review and it goes against them and had they had it had it gone against Edmonton and Chris Knobloch you're talking about uh, a Florida power play to potentially tie the game not that the power play has been unbelievable in this series by any means but like that could have been fucking huge for that team instead the the goal comes off the board paul maurice loses his shit but even after all the oilers goals you, you, they were showing close-ups of of panthers players and they looked fucking worried that was the, the chris knobloch challenging that sean said right in the moment he was like before we even saw replay he was like this is going to be overturned. It has to be. There's no way Chris Knobloch doesn't, is someone who hears from his video coach, fuck, it's going to be too close and says, whatever, we're just doing it anyway. And you're right, razor thin, razor thin. My friends were texting me, what is he doing? What, like, that's not going to be, I was like, I kind of, I, I, it was a huge risk, ballsy as hell, but he's kind of ballsy or he's ballsier than maybe he gets credit for. Saw like throwing uh, Philip Broberg into the lineup and mm -hmm. Dylan Holloway after like months and months of people being like, what does Dylan Holloway have to do to get into the lineup? And then he's like, you know what? Fuck it. Whatever. Like we're tied in the Western Conference final or whatever. Yeah, let's just throw this guy in there. He if he's feeling something, man, he'll do it. But he's also a pragmatic dude. And it was the right call. So I would have taken the risk, even though you are right. They could have ended up tied as a result of it. But with the momentum that they're still getting from their penalty kill, 46 of 47, he was probably like, fuck it, man. I, I was going to say, I wonder how much. And, and I know it's, you got to make the decision very, very quickly in that moment. But I wonder how much the confidence in the PK unit inspires him to make that call I think it's right a there. combination of good intel from his video guy and or good enough intel from his video guy and being like, this is 
fucking like if, if Stu can keep a shutout going and still feel that he's as locked in as he is like fuck it let's roll the dice I Dave Jackson was having a little bit of trouble trying to nail down what who would have uh, guessed what he thought would would happen with it but I don't know hindsight's 2020 I think in the moment on the live stream I was pretty on board with it and I, I brazenly actually, I saying that it, oh yeah clearly I offside I didn't think that it was uh it was offside I, I didn't think that it was conclusive I don't know if I would have overturned it. I it, thought it was one that was, uh, and we're getting close to hit chat now, but whatever. It's it been a long season. It's more probable than not that it was offside. That's the thing. I'm like, we all know it's offside. We don't have the best picture. We don't have the best frame, but like from one frame to the next, you're like some fucking voodoo shit would happen for it to somehow be onside given how it looks. But given that it was called a, a goal on the ice... Yeah, I think that normally, like, if this was during the regular season, I actually can't even say that because, like, it, I, I don't want to compare like to regular season playoffs, but like, normally, if they don't have that yeah. conclusive, conclusive look, they'll just go with the call on the ice. So I was a little bit surprised. I don't know if I would have called it. And, and generally speaking, I hate those types of reviews with the uh, frame by frame analysis on the entry, and it, it just kind of goes against the spirit of like the offside rule. But uh, you got to give oh, credit yeah. to you, Chris like, Knobloch for for taking that chance. I generally, if we were talking about the regular season and it weren't the Oilers, and it were like <laughs> an unbiased moment for me, you know how much I fucking hate the like. He was on like he he wasn't breaking the rule, right? He yeah. was like he, he was trying to be on side, so he was on side. Like mm-hmm. that's the fucking that's what the Jack Edwards is very big on that. It's like treat it like soccer. Is it within the spirit of the rule? Then he was off sides. Let's keep playing hockey there. Although modern but, soccer is not a great comparison with that anymore. <laughs> you're right. Soccer is so basically since I've I've known that understanding of it from Jack Edwards from years ago. But for as long as I have followed soccer, which is like six years, they're more scientific about it than anybody. They <laughs> are like VAR fanatics. I feel like the, uh, the handball rule is a better comparison because it's like just because it touches his hand doesn't mean it's a handball. If it's in an unnatural position or whatever, that's true. Then it becomes a handball. Yeah, um, but still, yeah. Sean, uh, can you? Uh, Sean knows footy. Our, our friend Liam sent us a video from when he was walking out of the arena. As you as you walk out, that's just uh, a long Rogers Place, and then if you keep walking down on the left, that takes you to where the Moss Pit is. But people are. This is just the fucking sidewalk, man. This is merely the sidewalk. That place is going to be the biggest party. Oh my god. I just I can't even imagine. I love it so much for them. And I did you know what? I didn't know uh, what do we got? What's this stew jersey right here? The 74. Oh. What's on the back of it? Oh, can we uh zoom? No. Fuck. <laughs> I'm getting up and I'm shot. We got eyes. You see that though? Pete's getting up. I can't tell what that is. It's definitely not like just plain text. It's also not a real jersey either. It's like a hoodie, but I don't know. There's something that just caught my eye. There's something weird Hold going on, on with that 74. Hold on one second. I, I've got a... Oh, do you think it's like I, a lacer? No, that's the, it's not a stew jersey. That's the Ethan Bear Cree jersey. Oh, is it, great. But it doesn't even look like a jersey. It's like a hoodie. It, I, it might just be a poor quality jersey. Yeah. Shout out the company that makes that. They also made the uh, the Zach Hyman jersey. I didn't know that ah, yes. Ethan Bear had worn 74. Yeah, I, I, that's what I had to check real quick. He did wear 74 with the Oilers. It's weird that, that like the coolest players wear 74 <laughs> for the Oilers. Yeah. It's like soccer. This is a soccer podcast. Like wearing nine means something. You go to the oil Oilers, you're a bad bitch. <laughs> Sorry, brother. <laughs> You're good. Yo, your lucky number is three. You're wearing number seventy-four. It's like uh, at Syracuse, all the uh, the good running backs wear forty-four. 44. Although they're weird about it now, they don't give it to people who deserve it because one of the guys is kind of an asshole about it. Really? But I hate that. Yeah, the we had a running back, uh, not this year, but the year prior, who was like really, really good. He was like up at, up near one of the in terms of rushing yards, one of the best in the country. But one of the former guys was just like he doesn't deserve it. Mm. And they never give it to him. It was outrageous. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, uh, shoot. Was I, was I going to say? Uh, 
Oh yeah, I'll I'll like we we'll, we we'll do like a document or something where we figure out all the shit that we're gonna do in in Florida. We already have some stuff planned, which is amazing. But I want to throw it to you boys. Uh, what do we do pro shop wars wise? Should we discuss? Is that appropriate to discuss on the show or whatever? Or whatever. Like, do we really like? Do I go into a fucking into the opponent's pro shop? Or do I just fucking I, stand I there? I love the Panther stuff. Panther uh, stuff is dope. I, I uh, Pete and I went to a music festival. I uh, ordered like a vintage like '90s real Florida Panthers T-shirt, and it came, and the 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 uh, collar was all fucked up, and I couldn't wear it. Broke mm, my heart. But the sad. fit I had in mind was like a sick Panthers T-shirt. Wasn't able to do it. I I like the idea of it'll been a lot of talk about outlet malls uh, right near the Panthers arena. See, There's some ideas sunrise. around that. Brought that up. Thing no one's brought up is the fact that that's not allowed to do that. You can't just show up into stores and record stuff. It's Since almost when? Up, almost for, forever. No. Yeah. No, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Why can you do it in a pro shop but not in a regular store? What about the, what, what about the permission what, every time? What, what about the said? they've given us permission every time? We've done we it with the team's organization. Some of these stores. I mean, yeah, we could. What about the so then? What about the boom gang guys? <laughs> they famously are committing other crimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's true. Like, He's right. They they're doing are, something uh, illegal. Literal criminals. <laughs> Sean they're, knows the law. They're stealing. Uh, <laughs> I would love to do a pro shop wars with Emily Kaplan. Mm. Oh, yeah. Just like at the outlet mall. At yes. the outlet thing. But Sean's going to call the police on us. Yeah. <laughs> Narc. That would be amazing. I'm more worried about the police getting called on me personally. But why? What do you got to hide? Uh, not, 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 not about hiding anything. It's about committing a crime in plain in broad day uh, uh it is frowned upon the uh committing crimes thing i truly truly cannot believe that that we're here shoppers standing their ground <laughs> oh no I, <laughs> that's, I didn't think that that's how one of us would die first oh my God. <laughs> yeah a pro shop war is the guy who <laughs> war decides to spring into action um i can't believe that we're here either it, it, I, I vividly remember, I don't know what episode it's from, but when we were talking about playoff teams and who's going to make it, and I forget what point of the season we were, and then we got to the Oilers, we were like, Oilers going to be in the mix? And I'm not trying to toot our own horn, but we were both like... I do I remember it vividly. Don't I don't know. The, we were like... It was the pre-US -thanks, Thanksgiving the pre episode where we... we Kind of took, um, we audited the standings. Okay. And, because that's when U.S. Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. the standings are audited. And you say, if you're not in the playoff mix by now, you're probably not going to make it. We looked at the Oilers and we were like, are they going to make it? And we both were like, the math doesn't really math, but kind of, yeah, they're, they're probably going to be there. Yeah. I didn't think they would be in the Stanley Cup final. One went away from winning the Stanley Cup. And I certainly didn't think they'd be there coming back and erasing a 3-0 deficit in the Stanley Cup final. But if they were going to make the playoffs, how could you <laughs> like, not? Well, that's yeah. not even true. They, I, I was going to say, how could you not see them making a deep run? And, like, the answer is, like, what's their goaltending? Because, yeah. like, at that point, we were like, holy shit. Yeah. Their goaltending, it, like, they're, they're just throwing goalies overboard. They're not adding anything. They had to make a trade for a goalie. Holland had to do something. Cool, Jack Campbell got sent down. It is very funny. Where's the, where's the good guy? We sent Jack Campbell down, man. There was a group of teams where it was like, if they just had a goalie. Yeah. It was them, the Devils, the Leafs, kind of. Mm -hmm. and Hurricanes. Hurricanes. Yeah, Hurricanes. And now, <laughs> man, Stuart it's... Skinner might win a Stanley Cup. But, it, I mean, I guess if you did tell me that, like, the Oilers were going to be one win away from the Stanley Cup. And you were just like, oh, by the way, they pulled some fucking bullshit. That would not be surprising, I guess. What do you think if somebody said the Oilers pulled some bullshit <laughs> and their one win away from the Stanley Cup, what would our various guesses be? I, I would think that one of us actually would guess. Down 3 nothing. They back. were down yeah. 3 nothing, and they came back. Yeah. I'd think of something. I'd probably overthink it and be like Connor McDavid switch to goalie at something. the time i probably would have guessed they traded for Allmark and then beat the bruins in the stanley cup that That'd would have be been crazy. my like i would have been on full hater mode at that point i just yo I you'd be such it. an oil man 
if this oh were against God. the Bruins. Oh You'd be the oil God. man of all oil men. I would have a Linus Olmark jersey for sure in that situation. I would be producing. I would give <laughs> up my chair to let you fucking hate the hardest anyone has ever hated. Oh, man. It would be beautiful. It would be such a beautiful... Not even like revenge, but like the story... The, oh, my God. The, the, the pieces on the... The friends turned enemies between Jeremy Swayman and Linus Allmark. Oh, would have been beautiful. That's not fucking true, man. They they would hug after the games. They would go that to center ice after the games and they would hug. The worst possible behavior in the history. And of people would be like, "What happened to hockey? They used to beat each other up." And it's like, well, then I guess they don't eat anymore because those guys are hugging at center ice. It's a it's the, a cool thing. The handshake line would have been the most magical hug of all time. Oh yeah. Um, a thing that we talked about on Friday's episode was. Uh, if the Oilers win game six, you're going to get a game seven in Florida. And obviously they're not going to be able to match the intensity of what was seen in this series from Edmonton, one of the craziest buildings, one of the craziest fan bases in all of hockey. But there's been a general disappointment with the atmosphere in Florida. Now they've got an opportunity for game seven to be crazy. And we will be there to be able to evaluate it. I am excited to see what that building is like for game seven, not only to see like if they can surprise us, but also like just what the energy is for a team that has blown a three Oh series lead and is hosting game seven. So we're going to do a vibes evaluation video. I yeah. All we need are glasses, notepads, pens, just go around, walk around. We go to stores. If Sean lets us bring a camera, see what people just looks like they're just buying groceries. <laughs> I really seem, do, they don't seem crazy for the cup to me. They're I, going to I feel like you're going to be able to fucking blow cut. these people blow these uh, Panthers fans over with a strong gust yeah. of wind because they're going to be so fucking puckered and yeah. nervous. And that's what sucks well, though because like if they if like they're not making a ton of noise or whatever like how the fuck would you feel? A hundred percent. It doesn't matter where, like if it was Montreal or like anything. And I like, I love Montreal and like all these various like uh, passionate fan bases. We were there in game seven for 2019 for the Bruins where like the Bruins had to force that game and they were still like, how the fuck did the blues take us <laughs> seven games? And the place was just fucking dead. It was unlike anything I'd ever seen. It was it was horrible. And, so I'm and not going to if, if there isn't a ton of like crazy shit that I was seeing in Edmonton in Florida, I'll be like, yeah, those people had nothing to lose. And even if it is crazy, it's going to be like a forced crazy. You're going to have to force that enthusiasm out of yourself. I if think you're a that we're going to be fan. getting some loud loud music being played i think they're going to be uh, my friend kevin paul dupont calls it audio porn which mm -hmm. is when uh places try to manufacture you can't obviously do it you're not allowed to do it with fake crowd noise but you can manufacture some crazy energy in there by being like i couldn't hear in there because they fucking played crazy train really loud that's uh, my guess is you're going to be getting some some loud some loud music i uh we are obviously very pro Oilers and uh, Oilers biased Warms on my this heart. show. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I, I do, I do want to be sensitive and uh, delicate with Panthers fans because holy fuck, it's got to be an excruciating experience right now. Like first Stanley Cup, you're one win away from your first Stanley Cup in franchise history. You've been waiting for this moment for decades because you've been a league punching bag for so long. And now this, as you're waiting to cross the finish line, this has got to be excruciating. The next two days are going to be horrible, horrible. And a group that has seemed to have a ton of swagger and a lot of like self-confidence and just like, Say what you want about us. We know we know how to conduct ourselves. We know how to conduct our business. We're unflappable. Look swaggerless and flappable right now. They do. And the Oilers, I think, should be coming into this shit like, how could you let us do this? How could you? The, boy, you got, you got Holloway on your case now. You really fucked up. Like, they have to... They must feel 
like they are flying at a bajillion miles an hour. And I'm still, one of the screens has like the, the that incredible picture of Hyman after his goal where he's like, we're just fucking doing it. I mean, it, you got to be excited if you're the Oilers that Hyman got going, that Dreisaitl had a great primary assist so like on the Fogel goal. Uh, uh, you, Nurse is still Nurse scoring. Nurse is going, like Skinner looks great. There's every bit of momentum and everything that you've wanted to see as an Oilers fan, to have faith in this team being able to do this, has you've seen it. I, I really do think you've seen everything that you want to see. I think that whatever betting lines should favor the Oilers and the Oilers, I think that are, are are definitely an emotional favorite right now. I would not touch this game with a bajillion foot no. pole, though, because I can absolutely see the Panthers winning it as well. Like, I mean, I, you said I'm you, not a crazy person. You mocked the idea of it being so Oilers, but it would be so Oilers. I, no, I mean, like, I, 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 I think, I'm not doing like I, I don't. I really don't think I because I'm friends with you. We would probably make a lot of jokes about the Panthers because it's, sports jokes are just fun to make. But I'm still like scared of the Panthers, and I'm like I, I'm 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 not taking the Panthers lightly. Eventually, I'm sure I'd be able to wrap my head around like, yikes, boys. You fucking blew a 3-0 series lead in the cup final. But again, history is going to remember this no matter how it ends. And they'll be like, but that team had McDavid. Wasn't that team supposed like history will look at this Oilers team as being way better than this Panthers team just because they had McDavid. Yeah, I, I just think that like, in the end, history is going to remember a seven-game series of two very good teams. And we all were hoping and thinking that we would probably see a six- or seven-game series in this cup final. I don't think we expected it to look this way. But do we have our staff pre uh, predictions? Do you remember what those are? I don't even know if I had either team in seven. Who knows? But go on. I just think that like we found a, we took a really weird road to get here. But this felt like the destination that we wanted and needed. And I just, for the sake of the storyline and for the sake of the team that we've kind of camped in the corner of <laughs> and spent so much time just pouring over this entire season, it would be so fucking And incredible. you know what? People would, I'm sure that like people Stanley could Cup. be like, well, they were be oh, oh, cool. You fucking jumped onto the 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 one of the betting favorites going into the season. No, that's not what it was. It was fascination with how. I mean, I, I'm I'm I am legitimately a fan of the team anyway. But like the reason that we talked about them so much was just the craziest shit kept happening we, with them. We do a we do a hockey podcast based around chaos, and it's undeniable that the Oilers are the most chaotic team in the NHL. We're For, talking about a hockey team that was 31st in the NHL at a point. At the mm -hmm. they, was yeah. they came into the season as... Tied for 32nd, I think, as, at one point. Yeah, that sounds right. As one of the favorites to win the Stanley Cup and then immediately were one of the worst teams in hockey and then fired the coach and then had the longest... Tied the longest win streak in NHL history. One of the, sure, yes. one of the earliest memorable moments of this show after its inception was the the, oil the, the creation of the Oil Shark Bowl, which was a game between the Oilers, who were in 31st place, going up against the Sharks, who couldn't win a fucking game. They both I think they were like 0-14. And we were like mocking the hell out of these two teams. And now, months later, not years later, months later, one of those teams... Is one win away from winning the Stanley Cup? You know with what I wish? Same we, roster, with the same like fucking no roster. They added, Adam they added Henry and Sam yeah. Carrick, yeah, and <laughs> and got rid of their coach, Calvin Pickard. They called up Calvin Pickard. <laughs> yeah, I they got would Corey love. Perry. What's that? Oh, Corey, Perry. Corey, Corey Perry. Corey Perry was big. Yeah. Oh yeah. If if we weren't traveling, I would love to do a. I don't think we'd be allowed to do it, but like if we did an oil shark bowl watch party one of these nights. <laughs> 
that would be incredible. I don't think we can. can we do like a live one in uh, in Fort Lauderdale. We should just watch it during the stand, like during, go, during Game Seven. Yeah, no, we could Game go, Seven watch party. We're watching the Oil Shark Bowl, not Game Seven. We call up a, like a Florida beach bar and just be like, "Hey, we're putting on an event there. We're going to show the Oil Shark Bowl the night before Game Seven. Don't That'd be so funny. Tell people to come. They're gonna they're gonna like it. We'll get a live band. Anthony Duclair is the only one that shows up. Anthony Duclair, I believe, scored a goal in that game. That sounds sounds right. right. I mean, I mean, I know the Sharks players scored goals in that <laughs> game. They famously won. Okay, we've got tons and tons and tons of stuff coming your way. Uh, so this is a Saturday episode. We will have a normal Monday episode from Florida and lots of extra content. So make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube. That's a big one. Also, like, leave five stars wherever you can on the various podcast services. We love you. We love you. We love you. And we will talk to you. Realistically, I mean, we're going to be online and everything. We are going to be so obsessive about this series anyway. But uh, follow us where you get whatever you get. And uh, we will talk to you Monday. Bye. Y'all silly like the mayor. 